This is live with Ryan Reese. Call now, 1 564 6173, or post your questions using the hashtag Live Ryan Reese on his Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook. So, two weeks ago, Lance, I started the show and I was sitting with one of my friends that I've known for many years. And as the show started just like this, I'm like, yeah, so tonight I have my good friend and my my mind went completely blank. You forgot it. Literally, I forgot his name. That's good. And the more I thought about it, the farther it went away <laughs> to literally where all I could do is literally put my face down on this <laughs> table here. Like literally, I just moved away, put my face down and just like wanted to hide from the world. What and he say? got, what's your name? And he finally realized, he's like... <laughs> Eric from Sleeping Giant is on the radio. I'm like, thank you, Eric. I forgot your name. <laughs> oh, we're on. Yeah, we are on. Yeah. It, it is actually going down. <laughs> we're about 27 seconds into the show. Well, tonight we have Lance Mountain, pro skateboarder, legend. I called Ronnie Feist a legend. He got mad because, you know, he's, he's been in the game a long time. But you have been skating a long time. How many years have you been skating? I started skating when I was 10, and I'm 52. So what year? I don't do math. Neither do I. So what, <laughs> what year? year did I start? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I started in 74. 74. So I was I was born in 75. Dude, that's crazy. 40 years, 41 years yeah. you've been skateboarding. I was trying to remember when I started skateboarding, and I got my first board in 1982 or 81. It was the first skateboard I bought. I told you this before. It was your board. Um, Future Primitive is the dudes, you know, the yeah. guys running on the bottom, the graphic with the with the guys yeah, and the dog. The caveman type dudes. Yes, the cavemen. Yeah. yeah. So I got that board in second grade. That's when I first started skateboarding. My cousin bought the Christian Asoy mini. These were the mini boards. So mine was blue with the black yeah. dudes, the black print. And then he bought the um, the Hammerhead mini at Pipeline oh, wow. in Upland wow. with, and my brother all took me. To get that board, and that was the beginning of skateboarding for me and OJ, OJ, um, OJ wheels, and that was insane there in Pipeline in those days. Uh, th those were uh, back then. One or two years was huge difference, you know. So seventy eight, seventy seven, that's so different than seventy nine. Um, seventy nine is hugely different than eighty, eighty two, eighty three, like. It changed so quick back then. So the way um, the boards actually just changed. everything about it. Style. The, the um, it was progressing so quick. The product, the actual riders, who was popular, who had opportunity, the industry, and the magazines coming and going so quick. Like, yeah, it was. <laughs> so really, really quick, let's go back to the beginning because I want to talk about how you even got into skateboarding. Um, we have mutual friends, Jay Adams, hmm. um, and he was part of the Venice Beach crew. Back in the, I, what was that? What was the name of the boards that they were riding for back then? Well, they rode for Zephyr. Ze that's what it was. Yeah, Zephyr. they rode for the Zephyr team. So that whole thing started. How old were you at that at that time when, when that scene started up there? Well, because the, that's how skateboarding birth was from there. Um, you know, it's. I started skating, the same time, a lot of those guys started skating in 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 some sense. Okay. Um. Not not Tony and those guys. They skate. They started skating in the '60s, but their popularity um, really boomed in like '77, '76, '77. Was that because of all the contests? Um, but there were skaters before them, and there was known skaters before them, and there was skateboarding before them, and so we knew of skateboarders. We and uh, there was skateboarding was very. Um, young and so there it was very trick oriented in that like what you'd call freestyle so right when you got a skateboard and loose ball bearing skateboard in 75 74 76 you tried 360s whoever did the most 360s was the local kid whoever could do handstands and wheelies this and is all, this all on flat ground like no yeah, it's ramp. all on flat yeah and um <laughs> you know crazy. a couple kids were like trying to launch off you know evil knievel was popular so you'd set up bricks and try to fly off on bikes and us skateboarders were trying to fly off on skateboards. Right. And the reason the Zephyr kids, the thing is it came and went so fast. The, the reason those guys were popular and became popular is there was a revolution of, it was very much more surf oriented and bank riding and transition riding and, and, and slowly going into vertical riding. And that was a huge draw away from what was already there, skateboarding. So... That's to say they really 
earth skateboarding is not necessarily fair and true to all the guys before them, mm -hmm. but it's definitely fair to say they're the ones that made us say, we want to be this, not that. <laughs> right. So they, they brought more of like the, because all the tricks that were happening were all in this flat ground area. And they were doing that too as well. Stacy was a brilliant freestyle skateboarder, mm -hmm. but he was also part of a movement that was very much more stripped down where they were trying to mimic Larry Bertelman and surfers they dug. That's what I'm saying, because they're all surfers. So yeah. then now they're surfing these banks or skating I mean, these banks. I think a lot of the skateboarders before them might have surfed, but it was, really? it was very territorial. Um, hmm. I mean, whatever. I love all skateboarding, so I'm going to give credit to all these guys. Even, Absolutely. Even the dudes they came against were brilliant skateboarders. But they had, a, they had, a, a, they had something that made us want to do that, um, along with a lot of other skateboarders. But... Um, um, so what was Jay Adams' deal? Because, you know, he stood out a lot. Obviously, I know it's from style. Jay, what, what I mean, Jay was a little bit younger than those guys. And so, you know, for me, I was like, oh, I relate to the younger guy. Because you picture yourself being the young guy with the older guys, kind of what he was. Yep. And he was the one that was in, like, nothing was in video. You didn't know what was happening. So everything was in photos. And he was always the guy that was in some sort of new position on a skateboard that you're like, how did he get there? What is he doing? Does he make that? And it made you like, you know, from a distance go, I want to try what he's trying. What is he trying? And uh, it made you think he was very spontaneous perhaps, you know? Yeah. Um, and he was very, yeah, he had, uh, yeah. He was one of the dudes that you're like, he has what you want, like, but you don't even know what it is. <laughs> Dude, that's amazing. <laughs> you know, it's, it's more of, um, it would, and you know what? Anybody that skated at that time was very drawn away from a sport that already had uh, limitations to it. You know, here, here's the coach and they say, you, you know, you, you catch the ball, you run to here, you have all these things. Right. It was very much attractive to the kids that didn't find their place in that or even want to find their place in that Um and it was very much, here's a toy. What can you do on it? You can adventure out and around the corner. You can try anything new on it. Um, and that, that was because it was so young and fresh that that, that was the, kind of the draw to a lot of kind of creative, quirky, weird kids that wanted just to be free. And uh, people like Jay, Jay is one of them, was one of the guys that was like, okay, he seems the most quirky and the most creative and the most spontaneous and the most carefree. Mm -hmm. attractive whereas some of the guys that were before them were a little bit more possibly rigid and already ready to get skateboarding here's what it is um it was a team well it was like back then it was like teams right there I was mean, teams but, but i mean it's it, more it's, like um, it's it's the same thing it's a team group sport thing <laughs> um activity yeah but it's also still in very individual right. um and it, like it like it said like majority of us by the time the name Zephyr was known in skateboarding, mm -hmm. they had already split off and broken off into their own things. Jay, Jay's step dad is making Z Flex skateboards. Stacy's riding for GNS. Um, Alva is riding for Logan, and very shortly after, makes his own brand. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, there was all sorts of great skateboarding going on. Tom Inaway um, is from the area I was at. Um, Where's that? Is us. Uh, San Gabriel Valley, yeah. Tom Inouye, Chris Stropel, uh, names that are coming up alongside but of you, that. You were in Pasadena, um, right? Yeah, Pasadena. I was born in Pasadena and lived in Alhambra my whole life. Yeah. And uh, there's guys from the, the Valley that were amazing, Jerry Valdez and Kent Senator, and there's guys from all over. Badlands was beginning. Badlands, and, um, yeah. All those, you know, by the, time, by the time they actually said, hey, we can have a professional contest in a pool, um, Steve Alba wins. Um, none of the, you know, none of the, Tony Alva didn't win. You know what I mean? Like Tony Alva was the pool skateboarder, the guy that brought vertical pool skating to all of what we wanted to do and what we thought was the best. And by the, you know, the year and a half, two years for them to actually organize and say, hey, we can judge contests and do this. There's a new group of dudes that were like highly, had learned what they did and were more competitive. And it would change so quickly. The progression of skate... Well, that's the way pro progression of skateboarding is. It's like... Yeah. It's crazy now even to see... <laughs> it's still progressing. <laughs> I know. It's so... I was... Uh, uh, what's his name? Cody McIntyre. I just saw like his video that just came out on, on uh, 
Thrasher uh, or the barracks. And he's just, I mean, he's just skating through uh, the barracks, cruising around. Just, the kid is just amazing. Um, the amount of kids that are ex- that it's accessible to and the um, uh, uh, the, the ac- accessibility throughout the world and, the, and seeing what other people do, catching up and uh, surpassing each person is so quick now. Um, and the level of um, critical thinking that was had before, like it, it was very critical. Like this guy's good, that guy's not good. That whole no, the, the standard of what is good or not good or what's amazing or okay or just average is like, who knows what it is anymore because there's so many voices looking into it now. It's not necessarily just the other skateboarder that is good that's going, no, that's not good. It's so broad and there's like, there's so many voices outside of the actual guys doing it that is telling the world who's good or not good that it's, you know, it's I, just something so different now that I'm like, wow. You know, I know I've been tripping on this lately. I've been watching. Uh, well, hey, if you're if you just tuned in, uh, you're listening to live with Ryan Reese. I have Lance Mountain Pro Skateboarder in studio right now, and uh, wow, we're just <laughs> I just uh, talking nonsense. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much a skateboard stuff, and and Jesus uh, is coming up soon. But uh, <laughs> yeah, awesome. no, what's interesting is that I've been watching the social media, and I'm seeing these kids that are just doing the craziest, weirdest tricks. That don't even like really look good, but it's just it, it. But it's just something I've never seen before, on social. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's crazy. I saw a kid drop in on a handstand on a quarter pipe, and get back on his board. Like it's absolutely incredibly hard, insane, insane. Like, and it's just just a random kid doing just some it. Random you know, kid. he knows who he is. Mm-hmm. It's incredible. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just weird. It's like it's um, it's so broad and open now that it's uh. I'm not sure what to think of it, really. Well, I, okay, that brings me to the next question. This is the question I told you I want to ask you on the air. I didn't want to tell you before. And you gave me no answer. You already probably know the answer because oh, this okay. is like the topic right now. So skateboarding hit the Olympics. Oh, <laughs> yeah? Yeah. Okay. So what do you think? What do I think? What, do you, what does Lance Mountain think? Wow, do we have to talk about that? Um, <laughs> Just a little overview. What do I think? <laughs> Here's what I really cool. think. My friend, tr- my friend asked me. Yeah. And this is the simplest answer. I am so glad that I grew up in a time I did, uh, that I got to experience skateboarding the way it was when almost every skateboarder th- thought and was proud that it would never be in the Olympics. Awesome. Um, now that it's in the Olympics, I'm yeah. like, cool, go for it. You got to keep going. You got to keep moving forward. Mm-hmm. Things happen. I'm just glad I got to experience and live. Skateboarding for what it is. Yeah. I, that's the way yeah. I feel too. Yeah. When, I, when I saw even, it's when I saw it come out in the Olympics, you know, where I've heard, we've heard talks about it for a while. And even the surf, surfboard, surfing is in now the yeah. Olympics as well. I didn't even yeah. know that. Those guys are probably bummed out too. I mean, I don't know if probably, but skateboarding for sure, it's like, it's pretty crazy. It's in the Olympics. I saw this picture that Thrasher posted, or I don't know if it was Thrasher or someone, but it shows um, yeah. Andy Loy, and uh, and then it shows like an Olympian, you know, yeah. some like like jocked out yeah. dude, like, and then Andy's like tattooed on his face, and he's like skateboarder Olympian. <laughs> and, and Tony Hawk said that the Olympics needed skateboarding more than skateboarding needed the Olympics. Yeah. Um. um if I was in the position I was, if skateboarding got into, if it was, if, if skateboarding went into the Olympics when I was at my peak, we would have just done it too. I know. Yeah. Um, you're going to take it, whatever you're going to, what's there. Um, what we did on a skateboard, the generation before thought was ruining skateboarding, thought it was terrible, thought you're, you're stripping it down and, and making it more trick oriented and, and uh, taking it to the masses and destroying it. It was their thing they loved you know um it just keeps growing and progressing and it's a natural step to go wherever um the biggest thing is is the um the control and who gets to control it that's what the real issue and the arguments are about Mm -hmm. who's controlling it what does it do to the industry what does it do to my position as a skateboarder as a business that's the real issue that that everyone's arguing and getting bummed about and happy about or whatever the the truth of the matter is and i had a conversation with the kid once about a couple months ago and he said, do you, did you like skateboarding when you're a kid or do you like it now better? 
And I was like, oh, I like it now better. And he was bummed. Like, why? Like, it was so much better back in the day. Mm -hmm. um, and I was like, when did you start skating? And he said, at, yeah, right video, which is, you know, whatever, 12 years ago yeah. or something. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, it's, it's just changing and they're ruining it and everything. And I was like, wait a minute. Okay, you used to skateboard with 10 or 12 kids, right? Or you had a group and you went out and you did your thing and you skated and you had fun, right? And they're like, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, do you still go skate with them? And they said, no. And I was like, that's what you're really talking about. Yeah. Um, skateboarding, whatever it does can't ever change because skateboarding is yours. It's yeah. ours. Yeah. It's your personal thing. And um, if you have the right people to do it with and the right friends to do it, it's always going to be the same. Mm -hmm. um, so um, So that's, that's a good answer. Yeah, I'm just, yeah, my wife said, <laughs> don't make it long. Quit no, I want to hit you up about um, that. You know what, I, am, I, I just love the era I grew up in and I also like the time now. Yeah, I, I love skateboarding, man. It's, it's, a, it's, it's definitely like, that's what I do, yeah. you know. I'm a Christian, obviously that's my identity is in Christ, awesome. but I'm 100% I'm skateboarder. Um, but I've been skateboarding mm -hmm. since, you know, 1981 or 1982. And I was like, dude, I'm 40, that's a long stinking time but i couldn't live without it you know it's 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 uh it's yeah, the best so thing ever happened to me besides I, jesus so okay so look let's fast forward here okay so now um i don't know probably around that time in 1980 80 something i was at my dad's church and me and all my friends i don't even know if you remember this but it was in calvary chapel west covina and it was me and my friends we had a little skate posse probably like 11 i don't know 10 to 11 of us and we were all in front of my dad's church and you come walking out of church and we didn't even know that you went to the church. And we were like, you know, that was Bones Brigade days. That was, I mean, that was like the video for, for me. That's, I grew up on Bones Brigade. It's probably 85. The search for animal, search for animal chin. Yeah. I, ha I was skating before, but I don't think I really got into the video thing. That's 87, yeah. Yeah, so that, that's yeah. the, I mean, I probably saw the videos watching with my brothers, but yeah. I just remember that was the video that like, where I skated everywhere. Right. The skateboarding had a huge boom right around Back to the Future. Oh, yeah, that's you why, know? because Marty yeah. was at the skateboard behind the car. It really had this boom, and, you know, our skateboard videos and everything that Stacy did had its, like, it really gave us that position, and, and um, you know, Search for Animal Shin was around that era. So, so during that era, when, when, so when did you end up finding the Lord? Because how did you even meet Jesus through this whole... This whole skateboard. Well, it's, it's just a, a, hopefully I'll try to make it short, mm -hmm. but um, simple question, simple answer. My dad's British. Okay. And uh, he was an ever American citizen. He actually was a British citizen and uh, he's an only child. He was one of the uh, kids that was, lived in the uh, south of London when it was getting bombed during the war and he, they shipped him out of the, whatever, out of uh, London. So he, at 21, right out, right after the war, he joined uh, military Lancers. He was in the military for a little bit in the British Army. And when he was 21, he was like, I'm going to go around the world, see the world. And he went to places, whatever. He went to Canada, did it, came down to California, met my mom and never left. When he had kids, he, I have uh, two sisters, one, one that's older, Rana Mae, and one that's in the middle, Bonnie, and then myself. Uh, he wanted to send us to school. And he just did not think the public school system in America was good. <laughs> and he sent us to a private school. And it happened to be a Christian school, not a Catholic school. No way. Which one? Uh, San Gabriel Union. Okay. Um, it was in San Gabriel. Right. Um, and through... He wasn't, he wasn't a believer. Um, we, the whole family became, got saved and became believers through the school. Dope. Um, my mom worked there and my, my sisters were older than me, obviously. My, hey, um, I'm going to fix... Is that Mike back there okay, uh, Golden? I think they're paying Pokemon over there. I'm not sure. Are, is she uh, good? Is he good over there? Okay, great. I'm sorry, I'm my sorry story too long. Um, yeah, I got saved at a young age through my sister um, and going to, going to private Christian school and mm -hmm. hearing the gospel and hearing um, the truths of Christ. And um, at a young age, I accepted him. Um, how, how old was that? I was 10. 10 years old. I was old. right around the same time I started skateboarding. I might wow. have even been about more nine, really. It might no have been way. right before I started skateboarding. Amazing. Um, and you know... This is, I, I, I've never lived that crazy life that a lot of other people's stories have. I did this, I did that. It's like, yeah. I'm more like you, like you're kind of raised in it. And it, so it has to become real and it doesn't, it can come real at little bits and pieces, which mm -hmm. is odd, I think, for someone that's kind of... Um, raised in it? Raised in it. But I think you could get, you know, and this even goes for the listeners because there's, there's, there's 
you know, kids that are listening, parents that are listening and, and people that are in our situation that you can almost get jaded by it because you're, you're raised in it. So your parents are Christians. But you, you have a, you have a different story. Everyone has a different story. Yeah. And so your, your, your pops is a pastor. Mm-hmm. So you can be jaded or kind of rejected or almost like, I remember even asking you how you, I remember it because I, I, I think of it all the time when I see my son in his situation. Mm-hmm. Every time I saw you guys, I would be like, how your dad doing? How your dad doing? How your dad doing? What how your dad doing? What? And what would I say? You'd be like, I could just tell now you're, you'd be like, why are you asking me? What about me? Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. It's annoying. It's annoying. How's your pops doing? How's your pops doing? Your pops is great. Your pops is great. Do you know what? Your pops is great. I get that great. all the time still, but it's different now. <laughs> yeah. No, it is now because you went through yeah. the, the cycle of the Lord bringing you back. Totally. Um, I wasn't like that. It was almost, it was really cool. It was more interesting. It was more like I had the foundation, but none of the pressure, if that makes sense. Yeah. So I started skating at 10. Instantly, the... Um, I mean, this is during the Jesus movement, right? So even the church I went to... Okay, wait, what year is this? In 74, 74, 73. Yeah, yeah, that's right there. Um, even the church I went to was like, oh my goodness, these hippies are taking over. The, you know, these sinful hippies are taking over, pretending they're Christians. No way. Of course. That's amazing. Because we're coming from kind of like <laughs> ortho, like rigid yeah. thing. Um, yeah. And I started skateboarding and all of a sudden, you know, I went to a school, there's five guys in my class and it's all of a sudden, oh, let's pray for Lance. He's joined the sinful world of skateboarding. Oh my you know what goodness, mean? yeah. And so, and when I went skateboarding, they're like, oh no, Christian moron. You know? <laughs> so you were just right in the middle. So I was like, I was like, it was, <laughs> it made moron. me, it really made me get into my head. I mean, that's how the Lord made me anyways. Like yeah. really got into my head and thinking and at a long, young age, analyzing and weirding out about everything. And it was like, uh, then punk rock comes into skateboarding, huge. And it's just like this whole movement of like, think for yourself, question authority. Um, but I believe even punk rock turned on itself because they never they never gave the answer. They only, only always complained about things. Yeah. But it gave me a standard and a feeling of like, I don't care what anyone thinks. I, I don't. Yeah. Um, except for the Lord. Yeah. Um, and slowly but surely trying to like put these things together, where they stand, what do they mean? And um, my sisters um, uh, were older and they went to Maranatha High School, which is a Christian high school. Yep. And by the time they were done with it, you know, they went through the whole, they had the thing where it's like, oh, Christians are hypocrites. We're so sick of it. You know, yeah. and when it came for me to go to school, it was like, you want to go to public school or private school? And I went to, I went to a public high school. I'm basically skateboarding at this time, traveling, doing whatever the family. Okay, wait, wait, hold on. So are you sponsored? Yeah, I'm sponsored. That's it? Okay. So you're sponsored, you're, you're, you're getting, you're sponsored and you're traveling for skateboarding around the world or just wherever. Yeah. yeah. In the United States. And uh, at that point, I'm like, well, I, mean, I missed a lot of stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I, w- uh, I had a great, great, uh, f- I had two friends that were g- great friends um, in the school, uh, the Kragos. Mm-hmm. Their dad was the Bible teacher as well as other things. And he was a great, great influence on me when I was a kid. He, I actually got baptized in his, <laughs> in his dough, in, in a doughboy, uh, in the pool in the back, pool in the back, <laughs> back, um, backyard at, uh, leaving eighth grade going like, wow, I'm going to go out in the world in skateboarding on my own. And, uh, at that time, um, my, my parents weren't going to, the, the family was not going to church anymore. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, I started going to church on my own and it was, I went to Xavier's church in Alhambra. So my uncle's church, Xavier Your uncle's church, And it was okay. like, I walked in there and it was like, what is he talking about? This is like straight over my head. Really? Way over my head. It was, he's, he's like a college professor. <laughs> and you're right? like, I'm a skateboarder. What am I doing? Not even a skateboarder. No, I, I just realized like, what was I, what did I really, what do I really know about the Lord oh. from the supposed of, strict Christian upbringing. And it was kind of like, I wasn't, I didn't really have any, uh, I was just on my own. But I decided like, wow, I'm going to be out there. Cause I, whatever, I was always already with the dudes that were doing whatever they wanted to do. Yep. So I started going to church on my own. Um, and through that, you know, you just grow, you're, you're growing a little bit more, a little bit more, you're failing, you're, you know, all that yep. stuff. Um, 
And so you, you, you don't have that one experience where a lot of our friends have like, I lived everything, I gained everything, it's, I did this, I did that, it was empty. It was more like, I try to do everything right and it's empty. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I mean, walking with the Lord and like, because I accepted the Lord so young, am I saved? What, do I have to get resaved? What am I, you know, all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, totally. Um, why am I failing? Why did I, you know, uh, and the Lord had some huge, huge points in our life that um, he made himself very well known. And uh, I mean, that's that's the truth of the walk. It's just like, it's not to say like, oh, I did it right. I, I always felt that n- knowing the Lord at a young age, how could I, how, how could I be so wrong when my friends don't know the Lord and they, of course they can do whatever they want to do. But since I know this, why do I feel this way? Or why do I act this way? Or I just, you know, in my head, I was, I'm very in my head all the time. It's a, it's a, it's a walk of faith, you know, and just like what we were talking about earlier uh, before you, we came into the studio is that um, everyone's in a different pace place in their walk and everyone's trying to to figure it out. And, um, you know, uh, some people are, are are getting gnarly teaching where they're growing quicker and then other people aren't necessarily reading the Bible and they're they're trying to figure out, am I saved, this and that? And it's, you know, like you know where you stand with God as you read the Bible and you pray and you 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 seek him. If you seek him, you will yeah. find him. And um, a lot of people, uh, they they go through life. It's like they're, they're kind of like the double-minded man in, in James because they're they're caught up in the world, but then they're, they're trying to follow God, but they're they're not really committed to one or the other. So they, and not not saying this for you. No, no, it's. But I mean, I'm just saying it's that. But that's a common walk with people that a lot of people that I talk to, and they're like, "Well, I feel like I'm struggling, and I I feel like I'm walking with God. I have a relationship, and I always just go back to them and say, "Are you reading the Bible?" And they're like, "No." Yeah. Well, did you give your life to Jesus? Yeah. Well, we know the scriptures say, "Whosoever calls on the name of the yeah. Lord shall be saved." But when you when you ask the Lord to come into your life, that's where your relationship starts. That's where you enter. Okay, yeah. now my relationship starts, and now you got to walk out. Well, it's been explained uh, very well by a lot of people as a marriage. It's it's not the wedding day. The wedding day is accepting, and mm-hmm. then the marriage is all the work that you do from here until you die. And that's um, that's pretty. I've never heard that, but yeah, that's you haven't heard it. I believe your dad told me. I I don't really listen to my dad too much. <laughs> um, um, you know, that's the accepting of Christ is the wedding day. And then like, there's all that relationship that you have to have. And so yeah. many of us, um, even I found myself many times going like, well, that's, that's very interesting. Like, uh, where's your wife? Oh, I put her up on the shelf and I haven't talked to her. In years. For for. But I'm know, married. Because I figured like I'm married and I'm doing everything right. Yeah. And there's there's times when the, like I don't feel that I experienced the power of the Holy Spirit until my wife and I had our son that was out of God's plan, not having a son, but the way we did it, yeah, and how we got there and why we wouldn't get there while we were walking and trying to grow and trying to do the right things and mm. the, the deception and and not, I mean, we're like both. At, the Lord is so rad. Like at the same time, the Lord was very clear. Like you know me, but you've been trying to do it on your own power. Yeah, totally. And when we had our kid, at uh, I was making two hundred dollars a month skateboarding. It was like, okay, now I might learn how to give up because I'm I cannot do this. Yeah. And as much as it is, um, the Lord just takes every failure and turns it into the biggest blessing if we are obedient and we spend time with Him. I want to stop there because we have 40 seconds left probably. Of the day? Yes. And then it's over. No, we have, uh, (laughs) we're going to come back after the break in two minutes and continue off that note. But we have a baptism going down on, it's our fourth annual baptism at Pirates Cove, Saturday, August 20th at 12 p.m. Um, Yeah, it's our fourth year. It's going to be packed. Come down. We got Sonny Sandoval, Ronnie Feist, myself, Shiny Head Band. And it's going down. It's going to be in Newport Beach. You can go to my website, ryan-reese.com to get more information or our social media, the whosoever's or my social media to find out more details. If you want to hear more podcasts, um, let's see, what what else? Podcasts, uh, video casts, any of the archives are on my website. And we'll be back in two minutes. More live with Ryan Reese coming up. Is everything all right? Call now. 
1-888-564-6173. Or post your questions using the hashtag Live Ryan Reese on his Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook. Uh, I think I speak for the entire administration when I say... What do you do? Back to live with Ryan Reese. Don't say we didn't warn you. Loud noises! We are back. I have Lance Mountain, pro skateboarder legend, in studio. And we're just talking about life, him finding faith, uh, walking the Christian walk, not by faith. Or what is it? We walk by faith, not by sight, in his uh, career, in the skateboard career. He was he was uh, one of the... Uh, one of the many original guys that that just made skateboarding happen back from the from the early seventies, but and my personally, I bought his his board was the first board I ever bought, and and uh, you're the guy that I identified with in uh, the Bones Brigade, which I wanted to be like when I grew up. When you um, say seventies, that's very offensive to the guys <laughs> from the seventies. They, I'm a, I'm an eighties. You're an, oh yeah, I'm sorry, eighties, eighties. But I'm a seventies skateboarder. Yeah, you started in the seventies, but you're an eighties. Gotcha. So I'm an uh, I'm an eighties. I was born in the seventies, but. 80s was my we were just, it was such, we were so, it was such a great time to be at the right place at the right time. That's seriously all it is. Dude, it was amazing. Yeah. I mean, that, that video, that's just like, I remember me and all my friends, we, there was, you know, a bunch of us, we made launch ramps, go to, go to parks, launch, go to the schools. Just, we, we were like, we thought we were bones. Brigade. It was just, you know, what's, uh, what's really interesting is amazing. that, that time while uh, that you, was he happening. He used to skate too. Yeah. He, he, he was, a, he was a skinhead though. <laughs> He was a skin. He was part. He was. Uh, he's best friends with my brother Shane. So he was a skinhead, and Shane and all their all the mods and skins. You know, you ride Vespas too, right? You used to ride I Vespas. Have one. Yeah. So, <laughs> so basically, everyone had that. We all had Vespas yeah. back then, and everyone skated in Doc Martens. He used to skate. Yeah. Uh, he had like a Schmidt stick, a uh, yardstick, yeah. uh, and he used to skate in twenty twenty. Uh, was it twenty hole docks or whatever? Yeah. Just crazy times back then. Fun times. Yeah, cool. fun. And you know what? That that, that time. The, uh, we talked about it a couple times. It was just, everything was right. The, the economy in America mm-hmm. and the things, people were happy. The music was happy. Like, there was this there was this idea, like, we could do anything. And I, I don't know if kids have that feeling now at this, at this time. I just don't, what we were talking about earlier, like, it was a special time. It was, re- 80s were silly time. And it was like, a lot of things were interesting and special. And, you know, going yeah. to punk shows were really they're terrible. <laughs> They're actually really terrible, but there were a special time, like, because like, no one, it hadn't been happening, not a lot of people there. It was and new, yeah. It was new and neat, and if you're looking back and you're like, that was really pretty dumb. 
but it was it was a cool time. <laughs> yeah, it's we we definitely live in uh in, di in different v times. VHS was just coming out, and like we it was cassette tapes. Yeah, lucky out. we had a uh, it was a you know I. I as as a skateboarder that got to be able to turn it into a profession and kind of being that first wave of guys that turned it into something that we could live off of where the guys couldn't before us, which always bothered me. Poor guys before us were so good, but they didn't weren't able or couldn't figure out or it wasn't the right timing to turn it into profession. Well, and dude, we got to. You got it's amazing. I mean, amazing. All you guys are all still skimming Tony because you came up with Tony Hawk, yeah. Caballero. Yeah. Uh, still, you. You're, I mean, you're you're sponsored now. You're right for Nike, right? Yeah. You know, Nike and and Flip. Yeah. Skateboards. Indy and Spitfire. And Spitfire. We, you know, Indy, I mean, skateboarding. Yeah, you we, guys, get, we still get to go skateboarding. You guys get Stussy. to skate, and you guys Stussy. are all still sponsored doing your yeah, thing. Stussy, I just got to go to Japan, and we worked on building a pool. We built a pool. In oh, Japan I saw photos of that pictures. And got to do this art show with paintings of all the guys. I kind of made me want to skateboard, and got to bring four of them out and skate. And it's like it was probably one of the best projects I got to do in skateboarding in my whole life. That's amazing. Because there was no strings attached. It wasn't this burden. It was just having fun with your friends like we wanted to do when we were kids. Side note, you're involved with a lot of pool, building a lot of pools. Here and there. I mean, they get built so, you know, if we if we can kind of barge in and have influence or whatever, I do it. And then that turned into kind of building a, building our, a bunch of private ones. I, I never do any of the hard work. The guys that build it, build it. Yeah. But the truth of the matter is, I think kind of what goes into it is more important than anything. Yeah. And just the little nuances and little tricks that make it either playful or more realistic, that, that's the most important part. And it's hard for people to put that down on plan. Did you help? But I'm tired of talking about it. <laughs> it's like annoying. <laughs> did, did, did you help uh, with any of the pools over here in Vans, uh, the new Vans skate park? If you like them, I did. If you don't, I didn't. I haven't skated them yet. <laughs> I haven't skated them. But you you helped this other one, uh, Santa on Margarita. A, I worked on someone. That was the very first that project. That one by your house. He helped that, build that pool. That was the very first experience of how not to do something, yes. <laughs> really? Yeah. It was a... Uh, this stuff drives me nuts, so yeah, no. Okay, but, that's um, a whole other conversation. It's a whole other thing. Well, There's so that, much red tape. and Let's, it's like, go, let's yeah. go back... Because you were talking about your faith walk, you were you were young, you were you were walking out your faith. Uh, you got your wife pregnant. You were making two hundred dollars a month on skateboarding, and now you're pregnant. She or your wife's pregnant, and you have a kid on the way. Yeah. Um, so what what's going on? What's going on through your mind? Um, I'm I'm like I I don't know what I'm doing. I cannot do this. And the you know the Holy Spirit was pretty clear to my wife and I at the same time, which is like you're trying to do it on your own power, like you know. I started the work, let me finish it. And it just drove us to um, really have that deep burden that this is this is God's going to take care of it. Yeah. We have to walk and, 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 and grow and um, put him first, you know? Like in any marriage, like, I mean, all, you learn all this stuff after. Like I was never taught like, um, yeah, the most important thing to do in finding a, a wife is find someone that loves God more than you. Yep. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, if they love God first, then the, everything's going to fall into place. And then I was never told like, here's the, here's the, here's the way you date. Here's the way you don't date. There is no such thing as dating. <laughs> like yeah. all these kind of weird things that seem so, uh, completely like absolutely absurd now in society. Um, they're all God's protections on us. And you can kind of know them and be aware of them as a kid, but you don't know actually how to live it out or all that stuff. And you, you take your walk and you make your mistakes and you do your things. And um, I mean, we got married and uh, things started picking up. I started making money. We could afford things. And then, then the whole industry collapse collapses on us. And what year was this? 89, 90, it really kind of just, 90. It actually collapsed and it's like, You've already spent so much time in it. It's like, you know, everybody in skateboarding had homes and houses and children at that point. And all of a sudden we went back to making $1,000 a month and nobody could do it. So almost everyone went bankrupt or went quit skating and went and did something else. There's only a few of us that made it through. And how we made it through or how we stayed involved was very interesting. And at that point was a huge the way the Lord worked in my life um, was like, I didn't know what to do. 
Lord, like, what am I doing? Like, I walked with you. I thought I've done the right thing. How is this happening? You know, we all do that. Yeah. Oh, is this and now here, why, yeah. yeah. Oh, it's like, whatever, like, <laughs> I don't have a living. What am I going to do? We all go through it. Poor, poor me. <laughs> um, but God but yeah. demonstrates his power but when through hardships. But you know? when you're in it, yeah, that's all you, you can uh, fo- and, uh, focus on. And it's like, we always trip on those things. And it's like, I keep going, like I ha- go back to being obedient, go back to studying, going back to digging into and spending time with God. And like, uh, um, it's something you talk with skateboarder, or, um, sorry, I got all mixed up. Um, but anyways, at that time, I'm trying to figure out what to do, what to do, start a company uh, was whatever was happening. I didn't want to start a company. I wanted to be a skateboarder. I wanted to get paid, but yeah. nobody was saying, hey, you're a skateboarder. Yeah. I went and talked to your dad. What do I do? Da, da, da. His best answer I've ever got in my life. He left the room. He came back. He left the room. He left the room. He came back with a box, th- four boxes of tape, the whole Bible, Chuck Smith on, on tape. Yeah. And he goes, handed me there. It's like, here you go. There it is. Seriously. And I turn around, find myself in the garage, like bummed out that I'm not a skateboarder. I'm actually doing a business. I always mess around with my friends, talk about it. I have a little tear rolling down my eye. Uh-huh. And I'm listening to Chuck Smith packing stuff. And it was the it was the most important time in my life. Absolutely. Um, hey, if you just tuned in, uh, you're listening to Live with Ryan Reese. I have a uh, pro skateboarder legend in studio, Lance Mountain. And we're just talking about his walk of faith <laughs> through finding Jesus, getting his wife pregnant, girlfriend, getting married, and uh, trying to find out what he's going to do with his life when the whole skateboard industry collapsed. So here, mm-hmm. and, and wh- basically where he finds himself is he talks to my dad, Raul Reese, and he gives him a box of Chuck Smith through the Bible which is the best place to start when you need to hear God's hear hear God speak to you? Yeah, and you can, I mean, you can be nine years old and hear in and know all the same stuff, but it's like it's still relevant every day. Yeah, and uh, it, it 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 builds and it grows, and you know, it's like. I mean, I, I talk to a lot of Christians, like this is for Christians. Like most of my walk is for Christians that are like wondering what's up, not like people who are in the world, like, hey, like, I don't know if I have a voice to them, mm-hmm. but I think I have a voice to Christians and they might like it or not like it. It's like tithing is huge. Mm-hmm. It's it's a blessing to yourself. I'm gonna, sorry, I'm gonna pull that mic up. Is it? Yeah. Is it good? Okay, sorry. And, for, uh, yeah, so t- you know, tithing is good. Tithing is huge. It's mm-hmm. such a, it's God's way of like, relinquishing <laughs> your feel that you have to control any of your finances. <laughs> mm-hmm. And then he just slowly like, I mean, I did this company that was basically worthless financially and he kept it going for 14 years. Tom- I tithed it out of business within the first six months because no I had no idea what I was doing. I tithed off of what I sold, not what it cost me to build and everything. And I had, I had initial amount of money and I tithed it away. And the company ran on no money for 14 years, basically. At least nine. No way. And and through the all firm. those- we're talking about the firm. Yeah, and through all those things, I'm like, what am I doing? Why am I doing this? And then Ray Barbie gets saved. And then it's just like, just enough water to go, oh, wow, I see what maybe you're doing, Lord. And uh, um, I remember I was, I was making this one pair of pants and I was making a, a, a label and- it was just like, okay, I'm doing this stuff. I'm committing to it. Um, it's costing a ton of money, whatever. I go pick up the labels. Little teeny things really affect me. Yeah. And I end up praying. This is the way you can pray too, by the way, just to let you know. I get the labels and they're completely wrong. And I smash the windshield out of my car. I'm driving and I punch the windshield out. Pissed. Yeah. Like, why do you do this, God? Yes. Like pissed, as pissed as I could be. And those are expensive, those labels. They're expensive. Right? They're done wrong. <laughs> Oh, we know about that. The best thing about it is nobody, when I took them home, no one noticed they were wrong. No. But it was enough for me to go, like, yeah. what, what am I doing this for? Why? Yeah. What, why? What did he say? And he was very, like, you know he said something, don't I you? I know. It was the clearest thing I've ever heard. He goes, I died on the cross for you. I'm trying to show you how to die to yourself. If you can die to yourself, I can use you. Dang. And it's like, I'm not taking your knees. I'm not taking your legs. I'm not taking your passion for skateboarding. I'm showing you through this label that no one even notices is wrong <laughs> to die to yourself. And, I, and then I can do something of it. And it was like, wow. It's, I mean, every time I tell the story, I cry. I'm not crying right now for some reason, but um, yeah. it, it's so, uh, Lord will do those experiences of those things and, and things. And it's like, I slowly realize like, 
he has no, he doesn't, it's, I, I might be rude and I might be saying things out of, out of, out of place, but he, he has no interest in my business. <laughs> mm-hmm. He has no interest in my win or loss category in contests. He has interest in lives. Um, and we so much say like, well, if I can be successful and I can win this contest, then I can tell people. Thank uh, God we'll really let, yeah. Yeah, it's like. Well, he don't care. It's just, no. He, he cares care. how I, he cares about lives. I'm not important. It's The win is not important. The business is it's, not is important. Is it fair to say that he, he, he cares about, obviously lives, but he cares about our, our heart issue towards him as well. He wants, he wants, well, that's, yeah, it's, I, yeah, it's, yeah. Our, it's our relationship. I mean, it's. I love I love that verse where it says he says come reason with me. It's real interesting. I mean, it's real. It, I don't know where it is, if it's before or after really, but it's you know you hear a lot about it. It's like your sin is as red as crimson, but you make it white as snow. Mm-hmm. And he says come reason with me. I don't know if it's before or after that because I'm not that scholar. We don't have Sean here tonight, so we, but, but let's wait till next week. <laughs> he's like begging us to come consider how he designed us in this whole thing because. It only works under his plan. And we so often try to figure it out through our plan, even being saved. And he's like, I got a better plan. I have a deeper issue. And he, it's interesting. Like, I remember praying when I started the company. Like, I didn't want to start. I wanted, here's what I want, God. <laughs> here's my list of yeah. what I really want. I, I'll, plan, do, God. I'll do whatever you want. I will do whatever you want. If it's working at McDonald's, I will, I guess. But here's what I want. I want a skateboarder. I want a skateboarder. I like it. It's who. I, it's what you put in my heart. I think as yeah. a passion. I want to do that. I want to have influence with the best skateboarders. I want to. I want to be in that position to have influence with them. And um, that's funny. I used to always know the three. Um, anyways, I always thought yeah. that meant this has to play out to get that. And years and years and years later, fourteen years later, I find out that I didn't create a company that I'm stuck to that is so successful that I can't get out, yep. um, that I'm, I'm stuck behind a desk when everything's changing and the, the business is collapsing. I am actually a skateboarder. Right. I got to be with people's lives. I got to be in things, in, 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 we even in and out of different people. There's more people that came to the Lord through the firm as well, right? Well, was truthfully... There, um, was there a couple others? At all, truthfully, at, at all, everyone that rode for the firm oh. except the Lord at some point, I almost... yeah seen or have seen whether they're walking or not walking now is a whole yeah. other issue yeah well that's that's between um, them but, and God. but yeah they all yeah one point, that's crazy. i've seen there's a couple that weren't but i've seen almost all of them like either walk up and accept the lord or pray in a that's thing amazing. through a through a situation or not or um, yeah um but that's the firm is just that it's weird it, that was my it was such a neat time in skateboarding and those relationships we were built are so neat but that time has come and gone already, and it's like I've I've been just as long in a whole nother world writing for someone else, and yep. somewhat feeling selfish, and somewhat feeling like, wow, I miss those absolute, just hopeless times. I'm not asking for them again, God, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> I really uh, I really appreciate them. Yeah. Um, Big lear- there are learning lessons when you go through those those times. They made me bold too. I would never would uh, I never would be able to talk this way without those. Um, I I went to Christian outreaches and things during the '80s when I was on Pal even because they asked, and I've never felt that like deep draw that that's where I belong. Or but I was like, I'll go if you're asking. Um, but I never was like, this is this is my deep passion or this is where I feel comfortable or this is, you know, I'm, I, so I'm always done them or whatever, but yeah. um, I've always had this uh, um, deep desire just to be with um, kind of like the guys that were like right at that top echelons of writing. Mm-hmm. But the Lord keeps changing those seasons. I'm in a different season and yeah, who knows? Well, it's it's cool too because even like I mean, obviously, you had some kind of influence in even uh, Caballeros. Did you have any influence in, in Caballero coming to the Lord or, or, or Soy or any of that? I because, have no idea. Because, I mean, well, because you were, you're, you're all um, boys. I mean, you guys are all friends. I mean, they, Caballero, they obviously were watching your life, too. Caballero and I had talks for years about the Lord. 
direct ones about it. Yeah, well, whether, there you whether, go. <laughs> whether, whether, there, whether there's anything watered or not watered, or was I possibly, in these some of the conversations, I was like, I possibly be one of, the, maybe one of the major excuses for him that why Christianity wasn't real. Um, <laughs> Christian and I weren't close that way, so we oh, never, okay. never had those talks um, personally. He was too busy up in L.A. popping off. Popping it off up there, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what Christian, he's doing. Christian's a madman. I had him in here in the studio. A couple, yeah, he's great. Couple, um, you know what? Uh, when I when I was young, seventies, there was a few few kids that became few skateboarder pros that became Christians, and at that time, the Lord led all those dudes out of skateboarding because no of their lifestyles. None of them were like the Lord didn't keep them in. They like whatever the lord does different things and different reasons for oh. whatever and so i remember being really young when my friends would kind of mimic me and mock me because they knew i was a christian or whatever goody yeah. more like oh goody goody kid yeah whatever um just having this burden for pro skateboarders um meeting and greeting and wanting these guys to know the lord and just for years going it's never going to happen <laughs> yep, and just seeing the Lord do His work is like, wow, it's so cool. I mean, I remember going to see Christian in jail. Oh yeah, I remember going to in, see him. Was because he in Hawaii or was he out here? It was when he was in Riverside. Riverside yeah. Because they're like he accepted the Lord, and I was like, I'm going to go see him. How was that? We we got like five minutes left. Let's, let's hear. It was him. awesome. I walked in and it was like, <laughs> I, it was just like, yep, he's accepted the Lord. I knew it. You could see it. Yeah, yeah we knew it. It was just, it was um. And, you know, everyone's like, oh, is it a jailhouse conversion? Is he going to do whatever? And it's like, it was rad. The Lord is just, no, he knows the Lord. I don't know if I went to check or went to encourage or I don't know what I went to do. I don't even know why I went, but uh, it was like, wow, the Lord's rad. Dude, amazing. Well, you know, like I said, we have about, I don't know, four or five minutes left. Is there any uh, any last words or anything that you, uh, anything that's like on your heart that you want to maybe to all the listeners, you know, maybe, maybe, uh, maybe it's encouragement for someone that's um, trying to become a pro skater, you know, and they're, they're in that, they're, they're a young kid and they're, they're submitting their videos and they're, they're trying to go for it. Do you have any, cause you know, I've, I've actually talked to several kids, you know, that, that couple kids that come to shine, they're like, I want to be a pro skateboarder. I want to let my light shine in the skateboard industry. But it's, it's just like the skateboard industry is just like the rock and roll industry. It's, uh, you know, it's wild and it's easy to get caught up. Yeah, the the major thing is you have these. I believe that those dreams and passions are are they're put in you as from God. I th I think we were designed by God, we we're created by God. So I think all those dreams and desires are put in there by God. Um, how we interpret them or what we want to do with them mm -hmm. is gets to be the tricky part because the Lord will change your desires if you walk with Him. If you're not supposed to be whatever we want to be, mm -hmm. and um. Just that, I mean, I want to keep coming back, for a Christian kid, I want to keep coming back to obedience. Like, uh, I, I think we've got, the church has gotten so soft and the world's gotten so soft that obedience, the word sin is not even allowed because people don't even want to know what that is or whatever. It just means missing the mark. Yeah. We all miss the Falling mark. Falling short. We're all, we all miss it. Yeah. From the beginning. Um, and then I think uh, the other thing is the, most Christian kids don't really want to like be obedient. Because yep. that seems like a weird word, but it's like, it's all for God's protection. Outside of that, um, someone that um, isn't a Christian or thinks that, uh, uh, that what I'm talking about is a complete joke, like, all I can really say is like, um, it's been the most wonderful time. And the only thing I do value at the end of it, even reaching the things I've done in skateboarding, I would trade it all. Um I'd give it all up for uh, the the friends and the people I know in skateboarding that don't know the Lord. Mm -hmm. I would trade everything that I've been able to get or have through it because it at the end of the day is basically worthless. Yeah. It's been fun. It's only fun in my view because God g gave You've gave seen God's me. hand through the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and the things that I've chased after and uh, received and, and, and try to grind and scrape to get is they're all meaningless. Yeah. The money's meaningless, the fame or whatever. Like I don't, that word is a super annoying to me. All we wanted to do was play on a toy as good as we could and experience <laughs> this. 
Yeah. And then when we get older, we're like, wow, how do I make this pay? Because I don't know anything else. Yeah. But any of the other stuff is complete nonsense to me. Yeah. And I still want to play on that toy. And it's, I, I think uh, the Lord's allowed me to be um, pretty immature in that way. But I want to be mature in his ways. Well, you are still ripping. And are you hurt right now? Or are you still skating? No, I've been skating. So you're, you're I mean, I had, I had two. You know what's funny? We don't have time for it. Yeah. But there did come a time uh -huh. after that punching the windshield years and years uh -huh. later, three years ago, I did lose my knees. I, I, I had a I gnarly you knee. I had a gnarly knee thing, and yep. I couldn't walk. I couldn't skate, and I couldn't basically skate for about two and a half years. And the Lord was like, "Now you don't have knees. What do you say? Yeah. Will you still walk? Will you still believe?" And it was a, it was a struggle. It was painful. It, but uh, I realized the Lord is being is still very gracious and just. He's he's weaning me off of what I've loved my whole life because at some point I won't be able to do what I want to do. Yeah. And instead of going, nope, he's going. A little, little bit away, a little, little bit away. Wean you off, wean you off. So when I'm in my wheelchair going, wow, I, I won't be so hit by it. Dude, <laughs> thank you for coming on. And guess what? No questions? I want to invite you back. <laughs> no. <laughs> we'll see what your ratings say. I'll tell you. 10 plus, 10 plus. No, no dude, it was awesome, Lance. It's, you know, it's cool to have you on. Well, thank um, you so much. Um, wow, it's very cool. I don't know if... Um, well, look at check this out, you guys. If you want to find Lance Mountain, you can find him on, at Lance Mountain on Instagram, and I'm sure you have a website. Is do you have a website? Just my name, LanceMountain.com. It's it was built like 30 years ago. And go to YouTube. Work. Go to YouTube and look up Lance Mountain. <laughs> check out his uh, his most current footage. And uh, we are again, we are doing the baptism. If you haven't been baptized, you need to get baptized. Awesome. Come down. It's on and cracking. The fourth annual Whosoever's Baptism at Pirates Cove in Newport Beach, Saturday, August 20th at 12 p.m. And of course, if you want to get any of the webcasts, archives, or any of the stuff, you can go to ryan reesecom and the whosoever's.com. We got banging product. We got, did you like our product? Got a new shirt right now. There you go. He's putting it on right now. No, he's not, actually. But uh, yeah, no, we got a lot of cool stuff. You got to see our sock collection, too. We I'm, need to give you some socks. I know you, you wear the crazy wear socks, socks, right? Yeah. Let's, let's get them dialed in for sure. Dude, it was awesome. And uh, I got to get Caballero in here next. Oh, he hasn't been here. No, man. He won't oh, even return my good. call. No, I'm just joking. He's so busy. No, no. He's, no, he'll uh, be great. He's, he's all good. He, um, I, we just reached out through email, but I know he's been traveling and his kids are ripping at the skate park. And yeah. he's just doing that dad life, you know? Yeah, him and Christians and their kids are hanging out. I'm like... I'm like in a whole nother world. Like, <laughs> my kids come and gone. My kids are the He's same. having kids. My kids are the same age as their kids. It's like, I mean, my kids' kids. Are the same Your kids' kids, kids, I know. So I'm in a whole different place in my life. Like, okay. Yeah. I'm going to be like them. I'm the old guy with the young kids. Yeah. <laughs> All right, dude. Love you, man. Thank this you has much. been Live with Ryan Reese. To connect or find out more about Ryan, click on ryan reese.com. Check us out next Saturday at 9 p.m. for Live with Ryan Reese.